Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India's Prime Minister Modi witnesses government formation in northeastern states. Taliban's persecution of women could be crime against humanity, says a UN report. And Nepal's PM Dehel faces mass murder case over comments. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi attended government formation events in northeastern states of Meghalaya and Nagaland on Tuesday, which have been retained along with Tripura state by his ruling BJP and its allies in the recently concluded elections. In Meghalaya, the regional National People's Party formed the government for a second successive term with support of the BJP. While in Nagaland, the BJP managed to retain power in alliance with the Regional National Democratic Progressive Party. The PM is scheduled to attend the swearing-in ceremony in Tripura on Wednesday. The Modi government has in recent years pumped millions of dollars to build infrastructure in the far-flung states that share borders with Bangladesh, Bhutan, China and Myanmar. The BJP faces further popularity tests this year as six more states vote before national elections in 2024. Soaring inflation and tax hikes have worked Pakistanis who are upset with policies of Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government as it makes desperate efforts for a critical IMF loan. Battered by a huge financial crunch, the country's foreign exchange reserves have dropped to only four weeks of imports, a report. People across crisis at Pakistan are upset over a storm of inflation as Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's government gives in to demands of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, for nearly $1.1 billion bailout package. While petrol and electricity tariffs have been hiked substantially, the general sales tax increase has affected prices of all other commodities. A resident in Karachi lamented it is unfair that the authorities are implementing such measures without keeping the poor in mind. The IMF's resident representative on Monday said Pakistan will be required to give an assurance that its balance of payment deficit is fully financed for the fiscal year ending in June to unlock the next tranche of funding. Long-time ally China is the only country that has so far committed a refinancing of $2 billion. Well, funeral prayers were held for nine policemen who were killed in a blast in southwestern Pakistan on Monday after a suicide bomber rammed his motorcycle into a police truck in Sibi city of Balochistan province. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack, according to the site Intel Group. Hospital officials said at least seven policemen were wounded in the attack, the latest in a series targeting police personnel in Pakistan. The recent attack comes as ethnic Baloch guerrillas have been fighting the Pakistan government for decades, accusing it of exploiting Balochistan's rich gas and mineral resources. A UN report presented at the Human Rights Council in Geneva on Monday stated that the Taliban's treatment of women and girls in Afghanistan could amount to a crime against humanity. The Taliban seized power in August 2021, drastically curtailing women's freedoms and rights, including their ability to attend high school and university. The UN Special Rapporteur Richard Bennett in the report covering July to December 2022 found that the Taliban's intentional and calculated policy is to repudiate the human rights of women and girls and to erase them from public life. Bennett said the Human Rights Council should send the strong message to the de facto Afghan authorities that his abysmal treatment is intolerable and unjustifiable on any ground, including religion. Moreover, there must be consequences for those responsible for serious human rights violations. Long-standing impunity needs to be challenged uh, for past as well as present crimes. In December last year, the Taliban also banned most female aid workers, prompting many aid agencies to partially suspend operations in the midst of a humanitarian crisis unfolding during the cold winter months. 
amid ongoing political turmoil after the second largest party in Nepal parliament withdrew its support to his government, Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel faces yet another crisis related to a judicial order to lodge a mass murder case against him. Local media reported two writ petitions have been filed in the Supreme Court against Dehel for allegedly claiming responsibility in a public speech in 2020 for deaths of 5,000 people during the decade-long insurgency against the monarchy when he was the supreme commander and chairman of the Maoist party. Reports suggest the apex court will hear the case on Thursday. While refugees in Cox's Bazar camp in Bangladesh were seen working to rebuild their homes on Monday, a day after a devastating blaze, the UN Refugee Agency in Bangladesh on Twitter informed that around 3,000 shelters have been damaged, affecting 16,000 people, and one primary health centre has been burnt to the ground in the horrific incident. Thousands of people were seen trying to retrieve their belongings from the ashes and were trying to extinguish the remaining flames with wooden sticks and water. The refugee camps in Cox's Bazar are prone to such blazes. A massive fire in March 2021 killed at least 15 refugees and destroyed over 10,000 homes. Locals and foreign tourists met colors on each other in Nepal while Indian widows, usually restricted by social norms, broke away from tradition this week as they drenched themselves in the colors of the Holi festival. Take a look. The Basantapur Darbar Square area in Nepal, which houses royal palaces, witnessed an explosion of colors on Monday with revelers and foreign tourists smearing each other with bright hues and dancing on the streets ahead of Holi, the festival of colors. According to tradition, people in Nepal begin celebrations of Holi with the installation of the Chir, a secret bamboo pole in the Basantapur Darbar Square, leading up to the full moon day when the main festival is celebrated. This morning we have been walking around, enjoying the colors, enjoying the pictures, enjoying all the people. Meanwhile, widows in neighboring India who often live in the shadow of forced penance and are usually forbidden from touching colors in orthodox societies, broke away from the taboos as they trenched in the colors of Holi. Gathered at a hermitage in the northern Holi town of Vrindavan, the widows, who usually dress in whites or somber colors, smeared each other with vibrant hues as they reveled by bursting into dancing and singing. Holi heralds the beginning of spring in India and Nepal and celebrates the triumph of good over evil. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.